What's up, Trainiacs? Welcome to this week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday. In this week's edition of Triathlon Newsday, USA Triathlon announces that they are pumping millions of dollars from their profits back into triathlon. Thank you, USA Triathlon. The longest standing triathlon in Asia happened over the weekend, and, and, it is a fantastic day again in Asia for couples of triathlon. Not NTK and me. She's like a pseudo triathlon couple. She's like the non-triathlon triathlon couple. Let's get into it. What's up triathletes? Welcome to this week's Triathlon Newsday Tuesday where every single Tuesday we talk about the goings on around the triathlon world in super serious ways. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video where as always we get into everyone's favorite part of Triathlon Newsday. That is a story from the Trainiac community and as always full links to what we talk about will be in the description below. Let's start off with some mad cheddar announcements from USA triathlon board of directors president Barry Siff announced that the 1.9 million dollar profit the USAT made over the course of the 2017 season is going to be put back into triathlon through the seven key areas that USA triathlon has earmarked as their focuses for development now this is not surprising in talking with Rocky Harris, the CEO of USAT at Triathlon Business International earlier this year. They have a massive focus on building up the grassroots of triathlon because frankly in North America triathlon is starting to decline a little bit and they want to fill that by bringing in hundreds of thousands of new triathletes to the sport and they're doing it through programs like these seven programs that you can see through the link in the description below and pumping $1.9 million from 2017 profits back in, and they're going to continue doing that for the entire duration of 2017 to 2020. Sticking with USAT, they announced the date of the 2019 National Winter Triathlon Championships, which will be held in Minneapolis, Minnesota on March 17th. That's a very unique format for a triathlon. It is going to be a 6K ski, an 18K mountain, mountain bike and then a 6k run all done on trails. The winners of the age groups, and I imagine there aren't going to be a lot of triathletes entering this, so if you want to go to a Worlds, this is one of the easiest ways to do it because the winners of the age group categories will be representing USA in the 2020 ITU Winter Outdoor Triathlon event. Location and date to be determined. Makes me wonder if I should go in it thinking that I'm gonna be maybe skiing this winter and I got a fat bike that's right over there and I run in the winter, I could, I could win this thing. The Laguna Phuket Triathlon happened over the course of the weekend and it was the 25th anniversary of this longest standing triathlon in Asia. And it's a, also a fairly unique format with a 1.8 kilometer swim in two separate bodies of water, 1.3 kilometers in the sea, and then another immediately followed thereafter 500 meter swim in one of the harbors in Phuket. Athletes then go on to a 50 kilometer bike, funny story about that with one of the pros, and then a 12 kilometer run. On the men's side, Frederick Kronenberg was the men's winner. He was just ahead of the runner-up in Kona Bart Arnault. But the funny story of this weekend is that Annabelle Luxford won the women's race after taking a wrong turn on the bike and doing a few extra kilometers. So if you look at the results, her bike time is a little bit slow, but still managed to win. Now there was no shortage of results and races happening around the world all weekend. Challenge Taiwan, the Asia Pacific Half Ironman Championships for the Challenge Series of Races occurred and it was a couple's extravaganza. On the men's side, Luke McKenzie ended up winning while in the field was one half of the Tim and Rennie show, Tim O'Donnell, who finished fourth. On the women's side, Radka Vadichkova, who's been knocking it out of the park all season on the half Ironman distance, won the female side. 
Second place was Marinda Carfrey, the other half of the Tim and Rinny show. Third place on the female podium was Beth McKenzie, the male winner, Luke McKenzie's wife. It's just, it's just good times. Congratulations to all winners and, and couples alike. We gotta get NTK into triathlon, but then she'd just be TK. She'd probably have a YouTube channel that'd be bigger than mine. No, Ego can't handle that. In Ironman racing, we had three large professional triathlons happening around the world. Thousands and thousands of people tuned in to watch Ironman Arizona on Ironman Now over the weekend. I love your coverage. And Nico Lanos ran his way into the winning spot on the men's side. And on the women's side, Heather Jackson had to do the same, running down Carrie Lester and finishing top on the podium. Congratulations to Heather and Eneko for punching their ticket to Kona in 2019. Ironman Cozumel also happened with Michael Weiss winning on the men's side and Svenja Thaus? Svenja Thaus? I just, no, you want to just put that right here and comments below about how to phonetically say that. Svenja Thaus. And finally, in Ironman racing, half Ironman Xiaomen happened in China with Kevin Collington taking down the men's spot by five seconds just ahead of Trevor Wortel in a sprint finish. Congratulations to Kevin on his first win of the year after a real tough luck kind of year. On the women's side, Imogen Simmons came out on top of a stacked podium that was rounded out by Heather Wortel, fellow Canadian, wife of Trevor Wortel. Couples are just, they are killing it this weekend. And third place was won by Sarah Piampiano. A lot of podcast guests actually, a lot of podcast guests doing well out there. I'd like to take a lot of credit for that. Speaking of podcasts, we just published one with 22 year old Sam Long, who is a young pro triathlete, coaches himself, has fantastic stories about eating a one kilogram donut. That alone is worth the price of admission. This coming week, we are going to be doing some really interesting podcasts. Tonight, we are talking with Dan Plews, the male winner of the amateur race in Kona. And later this week, we're going to be talking with Sly Walters about the mental aspects of high performance training, what it takes to mentally will yourself to becoming a better athlete. So we got some interesting podcasts coming up. Make sure that you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Now, let's get into this week's Trainiac story, which starts off by saying, my name is Jennifer Petran. I'm a 37-year-old wife and mother to one beautiful 10-year-old daughter. I work full-time in my own career and I also work part-time to support the business my husband and I own. I'm busy and time is a hot commodity. I've always considered myself athletic and was probably in the best shape of my life at 26 years old when I found out I was pregnant. Pregnancy and delivery went really well, but recovery hit me like a ton of bricks, taking almost a year before I felt normal again. And in my early 30s, I found the time to finally start getting myself back together. But when I was 35, unfortunately, I started to go through excruciating pain in my arms and legs. I ended up in urgent care one night and eventually learned I had an autoimmune condition known as Raynaud's and was also severely vitamin D deficient. I too was just last year. Towards the middle of 2017, with my symptoms now back under control, I was motivated to get back into shape. A sermon that my pastor gave in January 2018 was labeled, New Year, No Fear, and inspired me to stop being afraid of several things that were holding me back and start living life I always imagined for myself. In February 2018, I decided to sign up for my very first triathlon and my type A personality flourished with the obsession of data, workouts, training, and the commitment that it took. I did a 12-week beginner program without missing a single workout and completed my first sprint try in May 2018. I absolutely fell in love with the sport doing two more sprints this past summer. I finished in the top 10 for my competitive women's 35 to 39 age group at all three events that I did, and now I want to see just how much more that I can do. If you know anything about my medical conditions, you'll discover that cold water is not my friend. It scares me to death. Just the idea of swimming in cold water is enough to scare me. But I'm committed to not letting fear drive my life, and I'm hoping that Roca, thanks for the discount, you are obviously a Team Trainiac member, thank you, will be my new best friend. Thanks again for all you do. You're the rainbow bridge that helps bring normal people over to the pot of gold. 
that's nice. And the amazing lifestyle that can be found in triathlon. Well, that is very nice, Jennifer. Thank you so much for sharing that. But you know what? As I always say, you're the one that did the work. I can get up here and yap all I like, but every single one of you are the ones that are out there getting over your fears and your challenges of swimming, biking, and running, and conditions and it's awesome to hear these so thank you so very much for sharing it if you want to have your story shared here it doesn't have to be an amazing story of massive weight loss or getting over diseases but whatever your story might be share it here everyone finds it so very motivating so please do send them in to taryn at triathlonterran.com and if you are digging triathlon news days and you aren't yet subscribed hit that subscribe button below it's right down there it's free, good for your health. All right, Trainiacs, later.